So, sorry to interrupt you, Marius. <laughs> All right. So this session is organized by Working Group 1, which is responsible for a theoretical framework for this action. And theory behind quantifying the value of structural health monitoring is mainly Bayesian decision theory. So the aim of presentations at this session is to cover basic aspects of this theory which are relevant for the action. And the first presentation will be given by Daniel Honfi, who is already here, and the title of his presentation, System Representation. And just a moment. And this will be organized in the following way. So first we'll have all presentations, and then we have hopefully time for questions and discussion. So at the end of the session, after all presentations, I'll invite all speakers back to the stage, and you will be able to ask questions, and we will be also able to have discussion about uh, the topic of uh, this session. Okay? Now, Daniel. Thank you very much. So, I will try to be very quick, uh, and then we could have a lunch uh, <clears throat> at uh, noon. So, the we were a bit uh, unsure how to present this uh, in the best way because uh, our, uh, our hope is that we will have some uh, useful comments here rather than confusing questions, which will be then uh, help us to uh, finalize this uh, fact sheet, which is about system representation. It was mainly prepared by uh, myself and uh, Johan He. Rolsgaard from Rambo. Unfortunately, she cannot be here today. And uh, try to include as much as possible from the actual fact sheet. Uh, just to, so, so then you, you can even read the text uh, and see what uh, is the content and uh, uh, what we uh, thought that uh, should be included here. Um, it was, it's quite difficult to, to put something in a, in a fact sheet uh, with a relatively uh, short, uh, uh, relatively low number of pages. Uh, but then uh, the, the structure was more or less uh, discussed in the uh, working group meeting. Uh, and uh, also the, the, the template uh, defined a, a lot of things. Uh, so the main parts, uh, that uh, we agreed uh, upon on work package one is that uh, uh, we will talk about utility and risk uncertainty uh, and ranking of uh, 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 decision alternatives, acceptance cri criteria, and uh, talk about consequences. Uh, we thought that uh, we should have a, an introductionary section and uh, something about system identification, which then turned to be the, probably the most important one, but we will see. And uh, this is still not the final uh, version, so I hope that we can uh, improve it after this uh, meeting. Um, so the scope of the fact sheet, uh, we thought that it could be uh, given an outline about the basic principles of system representation the context, context of risk-based decision-making framework. Uh, even this, that could be discussed if uh, risk-based decision-making uh, is the right term here. And then highlight uh, is important aspects, aspects related to structural health monitoring. And then the abstract, uh, perhaps that is something that you might want to read. Uh, then we, we try to explain uh, why is it important uh, to have a special focus on this uh, topic of uh, system representation? Uh, because uh, this is actually uh, uh, turned, to be, turned out to be a crucial part of uh, 
uh, any kind of uh, risk-based uh, uh, assessment in, uh, of engineering systems. Uh, then basis uh, theory and methods, then we listed uh, some methods that not necessarily uh, needed to understand this fact sheet, but uh, connected to it, like structural liability methods and engineering risk assessment, statistical uh, decision theory and Bayesian analysis and value of information theory. Um, and and the, the, the main uh, uh, message here is that the, the system representation uh, need to uh, need to be uh, consistent uh, uh, to uh, to come to uh, uh, good uh, decisions and uh, and uh, there should be no uh, bias due to poor representation of the system. <clears throat> yes, and uh, and uh, this uh, critical. Uh, 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 comments, critical appraisal, uh, to, to be able to assess, the, the, our main goal is to, to, um, to assess the, the value of, uh, uh, or quantify the value of uh, SHM, and uh, th these uh, methodologies exist, and they could be put into a, a, a consistent and framework in a relatively straightforward way, but uh, then uh, computational efforts could be uh, rel become relatively large. So one should uh, uh, always make some simplification, but that should be uh, uh, made by uh, uh, great care. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a summary or a conclusion of this fact sheet. So then uh, uh, some uh, about the main parts of the fact sheet. Um, with the in inspection and the monitoring uh, techniques, uh, we could, uh, uh, of course, collect information which could be uh, utilized to uh, reduce, reduce risks and uh, or uncertainties and therefore risks. Uh, but this additional information, of course, has a price, and that should be... Uh, in balance with the benefits. Uh, but uh, in practice that uh, quite often uh, uh, becomes apparent after uh, the installation uh, and operation of the system. But uh, as I said, there is a, um, th there exist a framework or th there, there exist methods to uh, uh, handle this and these will be discussed in uh, the other fact sheets of this uh, uh, working group one. Uh, so that, 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 that is described uh, in this introductionary part. And then uh, moving to this uh, system representation part, then uh, the here reference is made mostly to uh, joint committees uh, work on uh, risk uh, assessment and the papers on risk-based decision analysis. One should be able to describe uh, the system as uh, in a very generic way represented in this uh, figure. Um, so one should uh, define what uh, constitutes uh, uh, the system and uh, what is the, the word around it. And uh, one should be able to identify the actions that could be taken and uh, uh, decisions and uh, criteria. So, so there, there exists a framework for this, which is uh, quite clearly uh, described in a general way. And if you see this in uh, decision making as playing a game, uh, where the aim of the game is to uh, to optimize uh, the expected utility, then if you want to participate in game, then you can. Uh, and do that by buying changes in the system, so make physical changes to the system, or uh, buying knowledge about the system. And that is our main focus here with uh, the structural health monitoring. This is uh, also uh, explained in uh, our fact sheet. 
So, so there, there's a part on, on a special focus then on structural health monitoring, uh, which uh, in the current state actually is, uh, is quite long. Maybe it should be shortened. So I hope that some of you might be able, uh, have a possibility to, to take a look at the actual fact sheet. And uh, here, just to mention some important aspects, is that uh, the, uh, in the practical situation, but also in a the theoretical situation, it's important to uh, define and uh, identify the system correctly, and then uh, have a rationale of uh, decision making and an acceptance criteria, acceptance of the decisions, and then uh, have an idea about perception of risks and uh, consequences with their probabilities and uh, occurrence. Um, so here uh, we, we included some uh, description about risk-based uh, decision-making, that it can uh, enable then ranking uh, between uh, decision alternatives in a consistent manner, and it enables updating of risks, and uh, and also uh, uh, that, that that is based on, on knowledge available uh, uh, at the future, and then also one can. Uh, one can include uh, responsive actions. So in, in a structural health monitoring context, content, then this, uh, this last two are uh, extremely important. That, that is also described in the uh, fact sheet. Um, since the time is short, and I think I will move to the next uh, Section, next uh, section, and then we included uh, a description of uh, uh, utility. Since, uh, as we stated before, the objective of the decision making is uh, uh, to maximize the expected utility, which is, uh, as you could uh, see this in the pre previous presentation, practice is often uh, clearly focuses on uh, purely economic benefits, so costs. Then uh, here is included a perhaps well-known uh, figure on uh, the, how, how the, the costs and benefits uh, could be uh, represented based on the decision parameters taken from uh, uh, this. Uh, paper here, but also from uh, this GCSS document on uh, existing structures. It's uh, well described. So we try to include the essence of it in this uh, fact sheet. And also, then uh, one should uh, uh, define risks, which is, uh, I guess, well known uh, for everyone. Uh, so we just included a basic uh, description of uh, risk risks in this uh, engineering risk assessment uh, uh, framework. Uh, then uh, there is a relatively uh, significant part to discussing uh, uncertainties. Uh, first in general, which uh, yes, is uh, also quite a uh, uh, basic thing, uh, the different type of uncertainties uh, uh, elevatory uncertainties, uh, which uh, is the natural randomness of uh, processes and uh, ep epistemic uncertainties, which are uh, related to uh, the lack of knowledge or uh, uh, a lack of data. Then we uh, also try to uh, uh, highlight uh, or describe this in a, a structural health monitoring content that uh, even though this uh, 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 categorization of, uh, of uh, uncertainties is, uh, is not really interesting uh, uh, in the way they should be handled in a uh, risk assessment, then turned to be quite useful 
in this context, uh, in this context uh, because uh, epistemic uncertainties uh, can be uh, uh, represented uh, with non-physical variables, and then the SHM could uh, capture information uh, uh, about this, and that could be uh, utilized, and also... Um, uh, statistical dependencies could be uh, included in this framework. Yeah, yeah uh, I really need to speed up. Sorry. Uh, so, so um, then, then maybe I, I will just really focus on the structure. So, uh, this is then discussed in a, a SHM context: uh, how and why uncertainties are important. Then uh, we have a, a section on ranking. Uh, in a decision problem. This is also uh, quite uh, basic uh, first, and then uh, some, uh, some issues related to uh, SHM are highlighted. Uh, also included some uh, formulas, but didn't want to go uh, to give too much details because uh, that is also perhaps a part of uh, the other, uh, other uh, fact sheets. Uh, in the working group, also uh, decision tree as an example. And then uh, we talk about uh, acceptance criteria, uh, how it is usually done in uh, standards, and then uh, how, how this optimization uh, 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 should be carried out. That was uh, mentioned in this uh, previous slide, even including. Uh, uh, addressing uh, social issues just like the uh, value of uh, human life and so on, how, how this could be handled. And also we discussed a little bit the uh, LRP principle in, when talking about acceptance cr uh, crit criteria. And then, uh, but consequences, we also have a general discussion about how to how to, gener uh, how to represent uh, them in a generic way and uh, talk about the direct and, uh, direct and indirect consequences and uh, uh, give some uh, examples in uh, the SHM context. Uh, I guess, uh, unfortunately, I cannot talk uh, uh, too much details about this, but uh, you might uh, be able to look at the fact sheet itself and then Give us some comments or questions. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, Daniel. <laughs> and uh